Praise be Jesus and Mary. It's a beautiful Lenten reading which talks about the great mercy of God. The reading says that God will cast into the depths of the sea all our sins because the Lord is kind and merciful toward those who fear him. As far as the east is from the west, so far has he put our transgressions from us. This is scriptural language, which means that our sins, when we repent and turn to God for his mercy, that our sins are blotted out, they're wiped out. Our guilt is forgiven by our loving Father. And this is all demonstrated wonderfully in today's gospel passage, which is the very well-known uh, prodigal son, the parable of the prodigal son. Notice that God respects our freedom. We see that in this parable, that his son wanted to take his share, his belongings, and go and do what he wanted to do with them. And the father doesn't refuse, right? And so the same thing with us. God has brought us into existence, given, up, given us our lives, our intellect, our free will, and he doesn't impose himself on us, right? He tells us what the commandments are, and he warns us and even threatens us of what the just punishments will be, but he always respects our free will, you yeah. and so that's what happens. The father grants his son his share, and the son goes off thinking to find happiness, Apart from the Father's house, big error, big mistake, which again, the younger son learns the hard way, right? Sure, he enjoys passing moments of pleasure, but eventually, a great mercy comes along, okay? A great mercy that brings him to his knees. A severe famine struck that country, right? Here we have a material evil, that is going to be used to bring about a great spiritual good, namely the conversion of the younger son. So severe famine strikes the country. This younger son finds himself in dire need. He's knee deep in the mud, desires to feed on uh, the pods which the swine are being fed on. Right? He's reduced to this pitiful state. And what does that cause him to do? causes him to come to his senses. Coming to his senses, he thought. Another translation says, he turned into himself. Right? He began to reflect. What was going on when he had all of the money and everything at his disposal and was having a great time? Right? Again, the scripture uses the word dissipation. He's all outside of himself, just dissipating himself in all of the worldly pleasures available to him. And when those are taken away and he's brought to his knees, then he enters into himself and begins to reflect. You see, we can't give ourselves to the things of this passing world, but we must have an interior life, a life of reflection, and especially remembering these ultimate truths, the four last things of death, judgment, heaven, and hell, because the scripture says if we keep those in mind, we will never sin. And so coming to his senses, he realized he had it better at his father's house. And here I am dying of hunger. There are rules to observe sacrifices to be made at the Father's house, right? But it's better, right? It's a greater burden, a greater sacrifice, a greater suffering to be away from the Father's house than it is to be there and have the loving care of the Father. And so he turns and repents and goes back and he builds up this big speech that he's going to say. The father anticipates everything. And that's what God does. He waits patiently for the conversion of the sinner. And when he sees that the sinner has turned from his sins and to the father, right? 
God intervenes. He comes running out and he embraces the son. He doesn't even let him complete this big apologetic speech. But he's already rejoicing. They're getting the fattened calf in, in all of this. Right? That's how much God loves us. That's how much our Heavenly Father is filled with mercy to those who turn. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen.